Hey everybody, Joe Casabona here from WP in One Month, and today I'm going to show you just a little bit of what you can do with CSS. I'm here on CodePen, I'm going to link this in the description of the video so you can go and check it out and modify and explore if you'd like. But uh, I've set up some HTML here. You can see the source right here on the right. You can see the result of the source here on the left. It is uh, quotes from Star Wars and things like that. I love Star Wars. So we're not really going to focus on the HTML today. We're going to focus on manipulating what this looks like via CSS. So the browser by default has some basic styles here to differentiate elements. You can see that the H1 tag that starts don't be too proud here. Uh, that is a lot bigger than the paragraph tag here that starts remember a Jedi can feel the force flowing through him. So uh, there are some basic styles that the browser will apply. Each browser is a little bit different. Uh, that's a whole other discussion, but for the most part, uh, things will look basically the same. There's just uh, some subtle differences between browsers. I'm here in Chrome. That's my favorite browser to, to work with. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do things like change the background and text color. I'm going to change the styles of the heading tags a little bit and maybe apply a different font. And I'm going to be talking through what I'm doing. Uh, and this is in preparation for a webinar I'm hosting on March 6th at 2 Eastern time, 2 p.m. Eastern time, uh, called uh, an, a 90 minute introduction to HTML and CSS, where I go through what HTML is, how it works, and the elements that we're working with. And then I go through CSS, what it is, how it works, and how to use it. So if you like this video, uh, make sure to head over to uh, WP in one month and register for that webinar today. There are still some spots available at 50% off. That's just $24 to learn HTML and CSS, the fundamentals of designing and developing on the web. So Let's get started here. The first thing I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to change the background color to black. You can see that I have a background selector and I can use the keyword black. I could also use the hexadecimal color of six zeros. Uh, those are going to be the same. But now our text has disappeared so I need to change the text color. Why don't I do that too? I'm going to make it my favorite shade of gray. Uh, there are uh, perhaps more than 50 shades of gray, uh, but this one is my favorite for text on a dark background. Now this necessarily isn't the best, uh, let's say design or user interface. Usually you wanna stick with dark text on a light background, but for the purposes of, of demoing and showing the, the uh, stark contrast that you can create with CSS, I'm going to do something like this. So. Uh, we have applied uh, a background and a color. We're also going to change the font. So uh, we can select uh, several different fonts here. Uh, the first one is the one that we want to use and then some fallbacks just in case you're using a font that the user doesn't have installed. So I'm going to go with Helvetica New. Got to wrap quotes around that. followed by Arial and then just sans serif. All right, so you can see that our text has changed from a nice serify Times New Roman to a sans serif Helvetica New or Arial if uh, the user does not have Helvetica New installed. So that's it for our basic body styles. Actually, you know what, let's add some uh, let's add some spacing, right? Uh, our, our text is running almost right up against the edge. So let's add some spacing here. I'm going to add a padding of 20 pixels all around. Uh, actually, let's increase that a little bit more to, let's say, 40 pixels all around. Great. Now we have some, uh, some nice, uh, let's say, rhythm between our text and our edges. So uh, let's go ahead and style the heading tag. We're going to style this a little bit differently. Uh, let's let's have some fun here. Let's change the background of this back to white. 
All right, and then we will also change the color of this. Uh, let's make it, you know, I, I like this dark blue. Uh, so that's a nice dark blue that I like. We can maybe make it even darker, perhaps. So uh, now we have uh, this, and then uh, again, we're gonna add some padding here because that looks, uh, you know, like it's running running into the edges too much. 20 pixels is maybe too much. Let's just do 10 here. Uh, you can see, okay, it's reduced a little bit. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna change this font back to uh, a serify font. Okay, so we'll do font family, and then we'll pick uh, Georgia, and then Times New Roman, followed by serif, just a regular serif. All right, great, so our heading has changed. Now, why am I doing this? Why am I changing the overall body styles uh, just to change them back for the heading? Well, first of all, the, the body tag is one that encompasses the whole page. So if I know I'm going to use mostly these styles, I want to apply them to the body. But I also want to demonstrate uh, how CSS or cascading style sheets work here. And that is that uh, the more specific you get on an element, the more likely those styles are going to be applied. So I'm applying something here to the body, right? That's the entire document. But then I'm telling CSS, well, I might want to get a little bit more specific for the uh, heading or H1 tag here. So that's why uh, I'm doing that. We will talk about specificity in the HTML and CSS webinar that I'm hosting on March 6th. But uh, that's just the, kind of the reason that I'm changing things and then changing things back. I want to demonstrate uh, how specificity and um, cascading, the cascading part of CSS uh, is shown. So there's that, okay? Uh, next, we will style our paragraphs. Uh, you can see our paragraphs, the lines look like they're running into each other a little bit. We want to uh, increase what's called that vertical rhythm, right? And we can do that by modifying the line height, okay? We're going to use uh, a different measurement here to see how that works. 1M, uh, M is short for the, uh, the capital M for a font, right? So 1M is usually the size of a capital M for a font. Uh, now that goes back to the history of fonts, which is again a whole other video, but that's what M stands for. And it looks like 1M is not enough here. So let's try 2Ms. That's a little bit too much. We want to find a healthy medium. So uh, 1.5Ms looks pretty good, right? We have some space in between our lines, but not so much that we can't tell where one paragraph ends and another one begins. Uh, we have our heading, we have our text. We do have the, uh, what do we have here? This big escape is not his plan. That's a heading two tag, okay? So that's a slightly smaller heading. Uh, why don't we add some styles for that? But we want to differentiate the heading one tag because that's really the title, the main event on our page. And we don't want that to have to compete with any other element on it. So uh, maybe what we'll do here is instead of completely modifying the H2 tag to look similar to the H1 tag, uh, we will increase the font size a little bit. Uh, maybe we'll make that two rem. That's a little bit too big. You can see that I'm using another form of measurement here. It's called rems. Rems are a little bit more predictable than ms, and that's why I'm choosing to use it here for the font size. Again, I will talk about all of this in the HTML and CSS webinar. For now, just know that it's a different form of measurement to change the font size. We can also use M's, and in this case, nothing's going to change. However, that might not always be the case. So uh, for, for this demo, M's and REMs are the same. However, we're going to keep it with REMs because that's normally what I use for font size because again, it's a little bit more predictable. The last thing we're going to do here is I'm going to add a little text decoration, and that's going to be an underline. How's that look? That doesn't look great, actually. I prefer something uh, different than an underline because I have a little bit more control over it. So I'm going to get rid of the text decoration and instead I'm going to add a bottom border. All right, and you'll see there are some stark differences between the underline and the bottom border. All right, so uh, for one, the uh, bottom border extends the entire width of the container. Underline uh, just underlines the text. The other thing is that I can specify here the size 
the type and the color of the border. So if I decide I don't want the border to be the same color as the text, I could always change it to something different. Red, perfect. So if I make that red, uh, you can see the border is, is very different. Again, if I modify, uh, the, I can modify the width to make it as wide or as narrow as I want. Okay, so let's keep it red there. We'll add a little dark side to it. Uh, so there we go. We're coming up to the end of the video. Again, I just wanted to show you a simple introduction to CSS. I know I covered a lot of ground. I didn't explain a whole lot. I really wanted, this was more of a show than a tell. Again, if you want to get the tell part, head over to wpinonemonth.com and register for my 90 minute introduction. It's a live webinar to HTML and CSS. And if you cannot make it to the live webinar on March 6th at 2 p.m. Eastern time, don't worry. Everybody who registers will get a copy of the recording in their inbox shortly after the webinar ends. So go ahead over to WPinOneMonth.com. Lock in that 50% off price. It's not going to last forever. It's going fast. I'm Joe Casimona with WP in One Month. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Thanks for joining me.